Hey, I'm Todd, and today we are going to take a look at creating a VM instance in the Oracle Cloud. All right, welcome back. Today we are going to take a look at creating a VM instance in the Oracle Cloud, and if you have not already done so, you may want to check out my video on creating a virtual cloud network in the Oracle Cloud. You're going to definitely have to have a VCN created before you create your VM instance. So if you haven't created one yet and you're not familiar with how to do so, please check out my other video and uh, we'll meet you back here in just a second. But if you have created a virtual cloud network, then let's get started right away in creating your VM instance. So the first and easiest way to do this is to click on the quick action right from the Oracle Cloud homepage that says create a VM instance. Another way to do this would be to click on the sidebar menu, come over to compute and click on instances. Uh, but that just takes you to the list of all your existing instances and you'll have to click the create instance button from there. But if you do that, we can go ahead and click create instance and it's going to take us to the create instance page. Now this is really easy to do once you uh, get the hang of it and the first thing you'll need to do is name your instance. It's going to give you a default name and you can either accept that or name it something specific. Whatever you want to do is fine. I typically like to name it with something kind of descriptive that kind of gives me an idea of what the instance is used for later on. But for this demo we're going to just leave the default name. Now the next thing we're going to do is choose the image source. Now this is basically the operating system and the pre-installed software that are going to be on our instance when we launch it. Uh, I like to leave it as Oracle Linux but you can choose from Ubuntu, CentOS, even Windows Server. There are some Oracle images that you can choose from, some partner images, some custom images. Um, I'm pretty sure that um, Windows SQL Server is even in here somewhere. Yep, there it is. Microsoft SQL Server 2016. Um, so there are tons of different options. You can even um, choose from boot volumes that you've uh, that you have stored in your inside of your compartment inside of your tenancy, uh, or from a custom image that you've created. Now, uh, just for this video, we're going to keep it simple. We're going to just leave it as Oracle Linux. The next thing you'll have to do is choose the availability domain. Next thing is choose the instance type, whether we're going to use a virtual machine or a bare metal machine. Most of the time you're going to probably choose a VM, so we'll leave that selected. It's the default. Next thing is the instance shape, and this is basically the amount of CPUs, the amount of RAM, the amount of bandwidth. Um, all those things that uh, basically constitute the shape of your virtual machine. Now, um, depending on your needs, you can select up to 24 CPUs and 320 gigs of RAM when it comes to the uh, standard VMs, as well as the dense IO VMs. All of these things are, um, you know, configurable. Whatever you need for your shape for your VM, you make your selection and uh, you go from there. You can also change the shape later on uh, after your machine, your instance has been launched. But we're going to stick with the default one OCPU and 15 gigs of RAM in this case. Now down here, this is where you'll configure your networking. You'll choose the compartment that your VCN is within. You'll choose your VCN, choose your subnet compartment and your subnet. Um, down here, by default, the option is to not assign a public IP address, but most of the time you probably want a public IP address, so I usually select the assign public IP address. You can always add a public IP later on if you forgot to check that, so don't worry about that. Uh, next up is your boot volume, and the size is 46.6 gigs for the Oracle Linux instance image. Uh, and I'll leave it at that. That's a good good size. I'm happy with that. And you can also choose custom custom size. You can use in transit encryption. You can choose a key from Oracle Key Management to encrypt this volume. But we'll leave all the default selections. 
Next thing we want to do here is add an SSH key. And this is basically going to allow us to later on connect up to the instance um, via SSH. So um, you can add your public SSH key. And later on, when you go to SSH, you use the private pair and you'll be able to connect up. So finally, the next thing you have to do is click create and your instance will be created. Now, it'll take you immediately to the instance details page and your instance is going to be in a provisioning state at first. You'll notice some information related to your instance here, the availability domain, network information, etc. Your primary virtual network card information is, is shown down here your launch options and down here you can see any attached attached block volumes attached Venix boot volumes console connections work requests and so on and so forth um, and at this point if we scroll back up we can see that our public IP address has been assigned and we're now in a running state so at this point we are able to SSH into this machine and do whatever we need to do within it so let's give it a shot uh, and to do that, we're always going to connect with the user OPC and the public IP address. <clears throat> and then we pass in the uh, public, the private key for our SSH key pair. Confirm that the, uh, we'll accept the fingerprint. And we're connected up. So we are now on our instance. We can see that the host name matches the host name that has been assigned over here. And we are ready to go. We are ready to install software, uh, install Docker, whatever we need to do at this point. We are good to go and can interact with this machine uh, as much as we need to. So that is the tutorial on how to quickly launch an instance in the Oracle Cloud. In the next video, we're going to take a look at creating custom images and boot volume backups.